Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm live streaming now on YouTube and we're going to be talking about how to make some money at these comic book conventions. If you're ever going to be a vendor at any of these conventions, I'm going to give you some tips from someone who's been doing it for a number of years now. So I'll wait for everyone, uh, most of my folks to get here. Peace to everyone. Black First and June is on. I appreciate you being here as always. I'll wait for a few more people. And then I will be getting started. Okay. As always, make sure you sub to this channel so you can see my artwork and animation. I have a lot, some new videos coming up real soon. And next week, next weekend, I will be at OnyxCon in Atlanta, okay? And you can find all their information about OnyxCon at their website at onyxcon.com. Let me see. Yeah, I'll get the website for you guys so you guys can go to the website. Here's a link to the convention. Onyxcon.com. <laughs> I won't repeat what you said, Junazone. Just I don't want you to get in trouble, but that's that's okay. Do what you gotta do. <laughs> I have no problem with that, and I have no issue with people doing that. You know, I I did it too during that. You remember that? Uh, I don't know how old you guys were at the time, but if you remember that economic downturn, uh, what was it? Like right when Obama got in office, like two thousand eight, two thousand nine, two thousand ten. I didn't go to the movies at all, but I saw everything that was in the movies. I'll just say that. Okay. So yeah, that that was my that's how I got kept I kept up with current events, okay? So like I said, it was a that was a tough time financially and I I sure didn't go to any movies, but I saw all the movies back then. I'll just say that. So uh so yeah, that just let you guys know I'll be in Atlanta next weekend for OnyxCon. If you are in that area, feel free to stop by. I'd be happy to uh, sign anything that you, if you already have some of my work, I'll sign it for you. Or if you want to buy some of my new stuff, please feel free. Okay. Uh, for all those who don't know, I have a series of coloring books that are available on Amazon.com right now. You can get them for your young ones. I'll show you guys right here what I got. Naturally Cute Volume 1 and Naturally Cute Volume 2. I also have the Chris Crazy House Hyper Fun Coloring Book. All three are available on Amazon.com. Okay. And if you want to go to get those, those coloring books, please go get them now. They're like I said, you can go get them right now and Order them on Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime, they'll be at your house within two days. Okay. Uh, I also have a, a children's book that I did all the artwork for called Big Monty and the Lunatic Lunch Lady. Hope you can see it there, even with some of the glare. But I, I worked on this book last year and it came out and has been very successful. A lot of schools have it in their curriculum now, and I'm very proud of that. That, you know, a lot of young black boys are reading this book and just just young people in general. But it's had a great response from young black boys. And that's what we wanted with the book to help young black boys get into reading. OK, and it's a lot easier to get into reading when you got a character that's like you in the book. OK, uh, I'm working on book two now. I just finished the first 12 pages. So. As of Tuesday, I just finished those first 12 pages so that. Was moving right along. I'm going to try to have that that the next Big Monty book done by October, and coming right on the heels of that, I'm going to try to have the the third volume of Naturally Cute be done by then, and the boys' coloring book done by December. So hopefully, all that stuff will be done for the holidays, and you guys will be able to purchase it. And I'll be letting you guys know as far as that when that stuff comes out, you'll have all the links. Okay. So moving right along, like I said, what this, this live stream is going to be about a very important one is how to make money 
at a comic book convention. I figure since I'm going to Honest Con next week and I've become pretty uh, astute at doing this, I've, I've done it for years since 2011. I've uh, gone to different types of conventions. I've made mistakes. I've made some triumphs. So this way I can impart some of my wisdom to you guys and hopefully it will help you in your endeavors as a, a vendor at one of these conventions. Now, it doesn't have to be just comic books. You could be just selling uh, novels. You could just be selling artwork, whatever. Okay, I'm just giving you the basic idea of uh, how to be a vendor at one of these types of conventions, these fan conventions, okay? So, uh, first, just let me say the best part, the, the, the first initial step is to find a convention that you want to be at and, you know, make sure you get your spot as early as possible. When you find out about the convention and you think you want to do it, uh, if the best thing I would say, make sure you make, uh, if you don't know anything about the convention, scope it out first. That's why I usually do. I'll go to the convention myself first and then maybe the next year, then I'll go and get a table there. Okay. Kind of scope out the scenery, see what type of crowd is there and see if, if your artwork or whatever your product is is conducive to that convention okay so once you find out about that though make sure you get your spot as early as possible because a lot of these conventions they they are uh, first come first serve basis but also uh you know it's a lot less if you pay for it earlier so like with onyx con that table was, was mad cheap uh, when I when he first announced it, the, the guy that runs it, Joseph, he runs he he runs two conventions, one in, in February and one in August. Okay, so as soon as he announces it, I go ahead and pay my my table fee and get it in there. Okay, because that is a lot cheaper if you do it that way. You can do it the month before, but it's going to cost you twice as much. And that's that's not the convention people are trying to be greedy. That's them. They have to you know, make space. Like he organizes where everyone's going to be at, at the convention. So in order to organize that, it helps for him to get it, get you guys in there as early as possible. That way he can organize it. And he makes actual map. A lot of conventions do this now where they make an actual map to let you, let the, the, the consumers know and the visitors know where you're going to be at the convention. Okay. So that it helps if you get in earlier, the better, and you'll get a better table space in my opinion. Anyway, that's how I found I've got some good uh, spots at conventions. Just getting in early as possible. Uh, don't be ashamed of this, but it also helps if you know some folks, if you are friends with someone. Like uh, my very first convention, I shared a table with a good friend of mine, Mervyn McCoy, who's a comic book artist. And I shared a table with him. He was very gracious to let me share his table. And that was at the, the Megacon. Oh, no, that was at the South Florida Super Convention in Miami. And at the Miami Convention Center. So I shared a table with him and he was very gracious to share. And that helps. OK, because I didn't have to pay as much because we were we were both at a table. I just paid half the fee. Also, if maybe if you got into a good point where you're popular and you can be a guest at a convention, that's good, too. Or if you're good in with the promoter or the person that. Uh, as the creator of the convention, maybe you create some advertising for his convention or something like that. You're getting good with him because I've done that with Joseph with Honest Con. Like sometimes I'll create some of the promotional art and that helps me get a free table. So if you can do that, do that. But like I said, that, that takes time and, and you getting some clout as well to, to get to that spot. So first you might just go ahead and have to pay for the table. And uh, I like to pay for what I get. So there's no uh, chicanery later on. I, I like to pay for what I for what I want. That way, things work out a lot better for me when I just go ahead and pay it. Okay. Uh, let's see what else here. I'm, I got some notes here just so I can keep track of what I want to tell you guys. Uh, once you get your spot at the convention, make whatever travel plans you need to make. Uh, you know, think about where the convention is, and you want to be close to there because just think about how much stuff you might have. I have a lot of stuff, so. Not a lot of uh, display stuff, but a lot of product. So I have a lot of like heavy boxes. So I don't want to be staying 20 miles away from the convention center. I want to be as close as possible. Okay. What's up, Dark Meteorite? Welcome. And welcome to Brother Contrell Evans as well. 
So I, I, I always want to make sure I'm close to that convention. So that way I'm not too far. I have to like load up the car or whatever and lug a bunch of stuff and make sure you're somewhat close to the area where you're going. Now, if it's a, a big convention like Dragon Con or MegaCon, that might be a little tough because those hotels around that area are very expensive. OK, so just be careful with that. OK, you don't want to spend too much money. Uh, trying just to find somewhere to stay. I'll, t I'll tell you that right now, okay? You don't want to waste all your money and not have any profits coming home because you spent all your money trying to stay at this super fancy hotel, all right? That's where that hookup or knowing someone at the convention comes in because then you you become a guest of the convention and they pay for, they may pay for your table or they may pay for your hotel as well, depending on how popular you are, okay? Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I used to rent cars to go to conventions, but now I just drive myself. Like, you know, we got, uh, I got a home now and I was able to get two cars. I got, so my wife has a car and I'm able to just drive my SUV. So I'm able to just drive in the, in the Southern area. I'll say that. So if I'm in the South or there's a convention in the South, I'm able to just drive there and it's no big deal for me. Okay. Like Atlanta is not far at all from, from where I'm at in Tennessee. Okay. It's like four out, four and a half hours. Okay. And I've done it in less time. So <laughs> uh, maybe I shouldn't say that because I don't want the police to be looking for me next time I'm speeding down the highway. But I'm just saying, if you leave super early or super late and there's no traffic, you can make it in less time than is actually uh, allotted. Okay. So I, I always try to make sure I leave a day ahead of time so I can get some rest before the convention and um, not two to my horn. But lately, since I've been making more money doing it, I like to leave a day later, so I'll, I'll stay an extra day at the hotel just so I can get some rest after the convention is done because I, I like to, you know, I don't like driving when I'm sleepy or tired, okay? So that's that's just one of those things you can do. Like, I used to just, the, the day the convention was over, I'd get right in my car and go and drive home, but now I don't do that. I could stay an extra day, get some rest, and then go home. That works out a lot better. I'm a lot more relaxed, and I, I'm not you know, uh, my eyes aren't tired from driving uh, four and five hours at a time, okay? So the the next part is, you know, once you get to the convention and you got your table, you got a blank slate there, you want to decide how you set up your table, okay? This, is, this all goes into making money as far as, like, your display, and it, the display is what gets people to your table, okay? And I'm going to show you some of the items that I have that I use to get people to my table. Now, I do a lot of artwork uh, that's geared towards young people. So a lot of my stuff, and if you've seen any of my artwork on chriscrazyhouse.com, you see my artwork is very colorful. So that attracts a young person's eye to the point where they almost have to come over and they almost force their parents to buy something because that I just hooked them with that color real quick, okay? So I'll show you what I have here. And I don't use this one as much anymore, but this was one of the things, the table stands that I used to use of, you know, my, my little avatar there and his pet. I would use that to put on my table and that would attract a lot of young people to come to my table. Uh, I don't use it as much anymore because I have so much product. Uh, the product takes up more space than anything else, but I still do keep these table signs at my table. Like I don't have a big banner. Some sometimes it's good to use a banner. It just depends on where you are at the convention. So sometimes I'll just use a table sign. It's a lot easier that way. And I got these from Vista Print. I just bought some yard signs and I put like a little stand behind them so they stand up so people can see them. Okay. This is the one I've been using since Naturally Cute has been out, all right? And I got another one for, it just says Chris Crazy House on there. It has all the characters on there, okay? So like I said, this is just something that attracts the eye to the table and lets people know who you are uh, when, they, uh, when they walk by your table. And I'm going to get into some of the etiquette as far as like when people come to your table in a minute, but let me just keep up with the display stuff. Also, I noticed that a lot of people put like a tablecloth down on the table and they just had like a plain tablecloth. I decided to kick it up a notch 
and I made my own custom tablecloth for my tables, okay? Uh, there's a website called Spoonflower where you can produce whatever type of artwork you want and put it on fabric. So I went there and I have my own custom tablecloth and fabric that I used that I put on my table. So custom Chris Crazy House tablecloth. So even that, see how it's bright white and then you have all these colorful characters on there. People can't resist but want to come to the table when they see that even from a distance. I stand out from a lot of the other vendors just with that. Okay, and when I was doing uh, toys, those toys sitting on my table was another thing that brought people to my table. I haven't done toys in maybe a few years. I really want to get back into it, but I'll uh, I'll let you guys know. You'll probably see me doing live streams about that at a later date. Okay, so that's what kind of gets people to your table is that display, and you kind of want to feel it out based on where you are at the convention or what type of convention it is. Or, you know, how much product you have. Like I told you right now, I have a lot of product. So for me, just one little table stand, this tablecloth and the products themselves is enough to get people to the table. Okay. Uh, I'm not a famous artist. So, you know, just I'm going to say this a lot in the in this live stream. I'm not Jim Lee. You're not Jim Lee. So you want to do whatever you can to get people to your table. Jim Lee could just sit there and just like, uh, Joe Maguera and uh, J. Scott Campbell. Oops, says my connection is unstable. Hopefully it reconnects. Okay, good. But I said those popular artists don't need that stuff at their, uh, they don't need some big display at their table because people know who they are, okay? I'm not that big of an artist. I don't take any chances. I want to make money, so I want to get as much attention as possible the way I set up my table, okay? So, and another way to display your products, I bought these from Amazon. Uh, these are just magazine holders. And people use them at business conventions for like giving out flyers and stuff like that. Uh, I bought them because it, you know, they're, people usually give out flyers or brochures, but comic books and coloring books fit in here perfectly. Okay. So I put a, a two or three of these on my table. And people can just grab the, grab the product at their leisure. I'll show you just a basic idea of how it looks. So you see what I'm saying? And it's clear so people can see the whole thing. And people can buy, you know, see this sitting on your table and buy it. Now, you can just lay stuff flat on your table. That's fine. I do it like this, and I also lay some flat on the table, okay? Just like any other vendor, if you go to any type of street fair or whatever, Make sure you have your products all out on display that you want to sell to people. Okay. Don't, uh, don't, if you want to sell something, don't have it hidden behind your table. Make sure whatever you're selling is on display so people know what you're getting because that's, that's shorthand in their mind and their eye to let them know what's for sale. Okay. Let me put this over here. Uh, now, onward to, your, you know, like I said, I have a lot of product. So that, like I said, I, I sell a lot of different things. Okay. I sell comic books. I sell coloring books. You just saw the coloring books and I'll show you some of the comic books I got here. Let's see how big much of it is. You know, I got the Chronicles of PA, all four issues. I have my comic book series, the very first comic I ever did called Knuckleheads, issues one through three. And I have this Chris Crazy House action magazine, which has like three different like short comic books in, in one magazine, okay? And I have the, the Chronicles of PA graphic novel. So that's those, those four issues you just saw. That's all four issues plus extra scenes, plus uh, they have maps, character designs, and everything else in here, okay? So that that along with my coloring books, those are the products I sell, as well as prints. Okay, I sell posters and prints as well. I'll, I'll just give you an example of some of the prints that I sell. This is not all of them, because I have a lot. But uh, like I say, just this, this Afro girl with the dragon fantasy setting, and most of it is just random fantasy art that I like to do. Just uh, 
just my artwork just selling it that way. Sometimes it doesn't have to do with just uh, the comic books themselves. Like you can, if you have a product like uh, a comic book, you only have like one comic, go ahead and make a poster of that comic and that will sell as well, okay? Uh, this is a naturally cute poster that I made to go along with the coloring books, you know, just showing different girls. And this is exclusive. That means that these are exclusive uh, designs that I did just for this poster, okay? So you guys can see that. And this is just another fantasy poster that I have, just symbolizing black love there, star lovers. So I, I have, you know, like I said, tons of posters and artwork that I sell. And sometimes you want to just gauge it based on the convention itself or just based on uh, the crowd that you might have or what you want to put out there. But I try to put out as much product as possible to get people to uh, spend some time at the table. I have free things as well. I always try to have some free stuff at the table just that people can pick up. Now, when you have something that's free, like I have these flyers here, these little like postcards or whatever that are free to have my information on there. If you flip them over to the back, it has the link to where you can buy my coloring books or the link to my website or maybe my email. I don't give out my phone number anymore. I used to. Uh, when I when I wasn't so well known, I used to give out my phone number. I don't do that anymore because people can't be trusted with your phone number. Just saying, okay? Do not give out your phone number. I'm just warning you right now, okay? You'll get all types of strange calls and weird calls when you're not expecting it, okay? You'll be sitting there eating dinner and someone's going to call you and be like, hey, you remember me from this convention? I'm like, no, I don't. You know, just like, why are you calling me at 7 p.m. at night or before I go to bed or while I'm going to work or whatever? You know what I mean? So don't give out your phone number. Give out your email. Give out whatever you can give out where you can screen people before you actually talk to them about any type of business or whatever. Even if it is business, they can contact you at a business email. They don't need your phone number. The only people I'll give my phone number are people who are, he has my phone number, okay? Uh, People who are like really close associates, you know, I'll give my phone number to like, you know, the guy, the brother Jarvis that runs Black Science Fiction Society. He can have my phone number because I know he's not going to abuse it. OK, uh, you want to make sure you you vet people. Don't just give out your phone number at random. because, Like I said, you will you will regret it. You will regret. It. I'll just let you know that. I'm so glad I got rid of that phone number that I used to have when I was in, in Atlanta because I had too many uh random calls at random times. Not that I don't like speaking to fans or speaking to people, but you know, I'm not trying to chit chat with you when it's time for me to go to bed or whatever, or I'm trying to watch a movie with my wife or something like that. Okay. So uh, next thing I will say, uh, like I said, some more free things. I have stickers that are for free. I give out naturally cute stickers. They're free. So you always want to try to have some like free products at your table that'll keep people there or or maybe a conversation piece or just something free that they can take home, even if they can't afford anything. This goes a long way to get them to remember you. And maybe if they can't afford something at that at your table that day, uh, they'll go and buy something online later on if you have it for sale online or somewhere else. OK, or they can like contact you on your website or or by email and they'll be able to find you later because they have that free swag that they took home. OK, so. As far as, uh, let's see what's next. Okay, so let's talk about your etiquette as far as being a, a, a vendor. People have different ways of doing things, but I'm going to give you the real. Like I said before, you're not Jim Lee. So you can't just sit there at the table and be, have your head down and be drawn or whatever and think that people are going to want to just buy your work that way. People are going to walk right past you if you think you're too big and bold or too big and bad to communicate with them about your work, okay? When someone walks to your table, make eye contact, smile, say hi, introduce yourself, and introduce your work. You might do this uh, a million times in a day, okay? And you might not always get a sale, but it goes a long way. That helps stop people because most people at the conventions are just going like this. They're just walking by. You want to get their, you got their attention with your setup, your table, your artwork, whatever. Talk to them. Try to have a, a short conversation. Say, my name is, my name is Chris Miller. 
I run a website called ChrisCrazyHouse.com. I do comic books. I do animation. And these are my products. And, and, you know, tell them a little bit about each product. Now, you don't have to go through a whole spiel all the time. They might just be focused on one product. Let them know about it. Let them know uh, what came, what uh, what it is, the name of it. And if they want to know a little bit more about how you came up with it, give them a little bit of that. You know what I'm saying? Just be, you know, interact with your, your fan base and or interact with the people that walk by your table because you can create a fan base that way. Okay. I get more people uh, post after conventions that follow me on social media because I have that interaction with them. Okay. And I stand up too the whole time. I don't sit down at conventions. I'm, I'm standing up behind my stuff all the time. Okay. The only time I might sit down is if I need to take a quick like lunch break or get something to drink or something like that. Okay. But for the most part, I'm standing up and I'm talking to people that are coming into the convention. I, it's rare that I sit down. Okay. And yeah, at the end of the day, my feet might be sore. My throat might be a little sore from talking to a bunch of people. But guess what? My pockets are swollen too. Okay. So to me, that's uh, the, the sore throat and the, the, the hurt feet is worth it in the long run because I just made some money. Okay. Uh, I've seen a lot of folks at conventions that they'll just be uh, sitting there drawing or reading or whatever, and not paying attention to the crowd going by. And then they'll complain later on that they didn't make any money at this convention and they'll blame the convention and not the fact that they weren't active trying to get, you know, get some money. You know, I've worked in sales before. You got to be you don't got to be super aggressive, but you got to uh, put some work in. OK, it's not just about you're not like I said, you're not Jim Lee. You're not Joe Maguire or you're not my brother. Uh, what's his name? Marcus Williams. His artwork will sell itself. He doesn't really have to do anything. He could just not, he could literally not be there. I've seen it before where he just goes to the bathroom and his artwork is still selling because he has someone there uh, working the, the cash box for him. But uh, that's not you. That's not me. I put some work in to this artwork. It's great. It attracts people's eye, but me talking to people gets people to buy it even more. Okay. So make sure you go ahead and put that work in as far as showing some good etiquette and talking to people. You might shake some hands. You might even take some pictures or whatever. That's that's cool too, you know. But make sure you interact with the people that come to your table or walk by your table. Make sure you make eye contact and say hello, even if they don't buy anything. Make sure it's a a good interaction. Now, every once in a while, and, I've, and uh, I won't call this a problem. I think it's just uh, something that goes on with. Uh, with us black folks, when we interact with each other, there are some folks that will come to your table and want to talk to you to death, but that's, I'm used to that. Okay. I, I've, I'm black. I've grown up in a black community. I've had black folks talking to me, talking my ear off 24 seven. So that's not big, a big of a deal to me, but just make sure that if you realize this person is not going to buy anything, but they want to talk to you, maybe you want to move them off to the side a little bit, still talk to them, but also make sure you get those paying customers in there as well. And try to try to hold that the combo between the both of them. Okay, don't let too many people waste your time to the point where you're losing sales. That's that's the only thing I can put out there. Okay, so uh, next is okay. You got the person there. You've talked with them. They want to buy your stuff. Now, how do you get that money? Uh, this is the easy part, really. And if you, I like to give people options as far as how they can pay. So I have a cash box, obviously, that has cash in there. None of my products, or I don't overcharge for anything. You know, uh, most products, my comic books, magazines, posters, uh, the stickers I'll be selling, usually it's about five bucks, five to six bucks, right? And uh, the graphic novel, obviously, I have to charge more for because that, that costs more to produce. So... Once I, you know, I have the cash box there, they can pay cash. I make sure I have enough cash there where I can make change. Usually you want to have at least a hundred dollars in change. I say have singles and fives. Usually it's based on whatever your, your prices are. So my, my prices are usually based on a five, a five dollar, you know, decimal scene. So make sure I have a bunch of fives, I have a bunch of singles, but also what's helped me so much is having the ability to take credit card payments, okay? You will change your game and change your income when you can start taking credit card payments uh, for your products, okay? And I do that with this little thing here. I have a 
or one of the products I have is this PayPal Square. So I can scan people's credit cards with the with this PayPal Square that I hook to my phone. Okay. It works if you have an iPad or if you have uh, an iPod even. Like I used to use an iPod when I first started using this, but uh, iPod does not hold on to the internet like your a phone will or if you have a LTE network. Like I have an unlimited plan on this phone, so this works perfectly. Okay. And it works with the PayPal app. So all you got to do is hook it in there where you put your headphones at. Turn this off. So this is basically, like I said, you probably can't see because of the the light, but basically just hook this square there. I call it a square, but there's there's an actual product called Square, but this is the PayPal version of that. And you flip your slide the credit cards through there, and you can sell your products. Okay. Now the PayPal app it has a way to where you can set up your products and the pricing already on there. I do that, but even if you don't do that, just type in how however much the person is paying. Like if they're paying $10 for two books or whatever, just type in $10 and then swipe their card. And then they can sign for it with their finger or have a a, a receipt sent to their email or, their, or text it to their phone, whatever. Okay, it works easy that way. Like I said, this I make more money on this nowadays than I do with cash. It used to be cash, more of these conventions, but now most of the days it's credit card, especially when, as as far as me selling a lot of products to young people and to children, uh, parents are there with credit cards. They're not usually a lot of parents are carrying cash if they got a bunch of kids. Okay, so you want to make sure you can take those credit card payments. And nowadays they have even more things like the uh, Cash App and other other apps like that where you can transfer money. Uh, with PayPal, I can get money just transferred from someone else's PayPal to my PayPal. So it is up up to you how you want to do it, but try to have as many options as possible to get money. Don't don't have to turn people away because you don't have a way to get that money, okay? Don't have to turn people away because you don't have enough cash for change or have to turn people away because you don't have a credit card, a uh, way to take credit card payments, okay? There's, there's so much options out there. This was free. I have a PayPal account already. This was free. All I had to do was ask PayPal for it, okay? And they sent it to my house. A lot of these things are free, okay? So you don't have to turn people away and not give money. Uh, because you were uh, too lazy or wasn't thinking about how you were going to get payments, okay? That's the most important thing is to get paid <laughs> for your work. So you don't want to miss out on that, okay? So, I mean, that is the basics of how you can make money at a comic book convention, okay? Uh, the best thing I can tell you guys is to, uh, even if you're not selling at first, have a positive attitude about the situation and maybe if you don't sell a lot of stuff go back to the drawing board and rethink about how you can make money at these conventions okay uh i will say i've made more money at conventions that are geared towards black people because that's a lot of my products are geared towards black children so uh the black science fiction convention the black fantasy convention in atlanta onyx con i've made more money at those than i do at maybe uh a mega con. Now, another thing I don't do, I don't do a lot of fan art or art on the spot just because that's that's just not my thing. I like to I do draw when I'm there, but it's rare that I sell anything that I draw right there. It's, it's, that's just a personal thing with me. Like I don't feel confident enough to just be selling something I drew out of my sketchbook. Okay. I like to draw and experiment. And just not have that pressure. Like I've done that before. When I first started doing conventions, I used to do a lot of fan art on the spot. But people would buy it, but I didn't think it was good enough. That, that, that's just that just might be me. Okay. So I remember when I first started, uh, uh, what do you call it? Avatar: The Last Airbender was popular. So I I drew Aang and Appa probably a million times. Uh, I drew. Uh, Luffy from One Piece and Naruto probably a million times, okay? And I don't, I guess they were good enough to where people bought it, but I just didn't feel like I was, I didn't feel my artwork was up to snuff as to 
just be drawing on the spot and then selling it that way. So like for me, I just didn't have the confidence in doing that. So I stopped doing it. Uh, if you want to make your own fan art and have some finished artwork there, you can do that. That's what Marcus Williams does. He has finished artwork that's already done and he just prints it out and you can buy it there. But it's just up to you how you want to do things. I know my, my, my good buddy Mace, who does Urban Shogun, he draws stuff right on the spot and he sells all the time. But he's confident in what he's drawing and what he's doing. So for him, it's not that big of a deal. I know a lot of artists who do that. My man, my, my good friend Mervin, he draws artwork right on the spot. He does like Chibli art or Chibli characters. He draws it right on the spot and sells it, and people love it. So uh, I just don't have the confidence myself to do that, so that's not something that I always do. Okay, I have other products that sell well and things that work for me, so that's just what I go with, okay? I think so, too. That's why I'm looking into it right now. I'm looking into BlurredCon, which is the Black Nerd Convention in Virginia, and I'll probably be able to drive there, so that's a good con for me to go to, okay? I, I agree. I agree that black folks need to just make fan art of black owned comics and manga characters. That's what I like doing. Like if you follow me on Instagram now, I like doing fan art of 90s music videos. <laughs> so if you're a, a fan of 90s music, follow me on Instagram at Chris Crazy House on Instagram and you'll see some of the artwork I've done. Like I just put up some new stuff yesterday. I, I did a some fan art of that that song by the group Snap called I Got the Power, if you remember that from uh, the 1990s. I did some fan art of that and put it up there. I've done fan art of Aaliyah. I've done fan art of uh, the Flavor in Your Ear remix that Bad Boy did with Craig Mack, uh, Notorious B.I.G., LL Cool J, and uh, Buster Rhymes. I've done fan art of the, the movie House Party. I've done fan art of En Vogue. And I plan on doing more. I, I just like... like do what, what you love and see if it clicks. And people seem to like that. Like I did uh, some fan art of the the Rex and the Rex and Effects video of Rump Shaker. <laughs> people seem to really like that one. It's funny to me that uh, people will, that seem like they're so uh, uh, prudish or whatever, but then they, they see that and they love that though. Cause they love, I don't know if they just love the nostalgia of it or if they just, you know, like those old school, booty shaking videos, whatever, right? So I, I've done, you know, just, I, I like doing fan art like that. And every once in a while, I'll do fan art of uh, some characters from black owned comics or black owned cartoon properties. Like I've done Brother Man fan art. I've done fan art for uh, my brother out in the UK, Wayne Riley. I've done fan art of his characters from All Nights. Uh, let's see, what else have I done? I've done fan art of, Urban Shogun characters. So just whatever, you know, whatever I feel like, you know, doing. I, I like doing fan art of things you might not have seen before because I think that's, I get more fulfillment from that. I've done uh, fan art of Afro, Afro Man, and what's that? What's that one comic book? Uh, the Legend of Will Power. I've done fan art of that. So, that feels better to me than just doing Spider-Man and Naruto over and over again. Okay. Uh, first of all, it helps you guys learn about these characters, but it also, like I said, it's, it's a good feeling and a good advertisement for, for young kids to see that there are these characters out there that they can uh, appreciate because it looks like them. Okay. So, and I'll continue doing stuff like that more in the future. And I'll keep on doing my 90s music fan art as well, just because I'm a, a child of, well, I was born in the 80s, but I am ai was a teenager in the 90s. So that's just a, a special time for me. I always enjoy, enjoy doing that type of artwork. It just feels good to do that. So if you want to see that type of artwork, please follow me on Instagram or you can follow me here. I'll start making more videos of that artwork of me doing the paintings and the the drawing of it, and you guys can follow me here on this YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe, and also make sure you follow me on Instagram, okay? If you go to my website at chriscrazyhouse.com, it has all my social media links right there on the top. So I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Tumblr, and Pinterest. Those are the major 
platforms and I'm, I'm always in and Twitter as well. I'm always posting on those platforms. So if you're so inclined, you like my artwork, you like what I do here for these live streams, uh, please follow me on those platforms. Okay. And go to my website at chriscrazyhouse.com and you'll find all that stuff there. Okay. I have some free coloring book pages on there right now that you can go there and download to your computer and print out and you can do color some naturally cute girls on your own time or on your own computer. Okay. So uh, June is on asked me, do you read other black people's manga comic books? Yes, I do. I, I collect a lot of those. I have a closet. I have a box one of those plastic boxes, those plastic bins that you get from Walmart. I got a whole box of full of just black comics in there right now. Okay, it's in my, my closet that's that you can't see that's right off screen. Okay. Yes, I, I, I love reading black folk stuff. That's more inspirational to me than reading the garbage from uh uh the US. Okay. Like I said, it, it, I like doing that because it just like I said it makes me feel better. Okay. I like putting out that type of artwork and just because I know it inspires somebody else. So I'm always inspired when I see it. I have some books up there on my bookshelf of black art, uh, black writers and black creators on the bookshelf back there. Okay. Yeah. I have some, you know, mainstream manga and, and Marvel stuff and my, uh, my technical books are back there too, but on the, the top shelf, that's kind of like right above, you can, you can barely see it, but I have a lot of black books just sitting up there. Okay. So and like I said, I'm going to be doing more showcases. I've just I've done some on this channel already. So if you want to showcase or you want to see more artwork, books, comics, whatever from other artists, uh, you know, please follow me here, and I'll let you know. Uh, the the brother Lashawn Thomas just Johnson just came out with the the Cannon Busters anime that's on Netflix right now. If you have a, a Netflix account, go check out Cannon Busters. Okay. He's been working on this project for a long time. I've been a uh, a fan of his his work for a long time. It's been a long time since I've talked to him personally. Okay, I used to we used to chat a lot back in like 2012, 2013. But he became once he decided to do Cannon Busters, he became very busy with that, and uh, he produced Black Di the Black Dynamite animated series as well. But Cannon Busters has been like his baby for a long time, so I'm glad he finally got it produced. And I remember donating to his Kickstarter uh, to get the first episode done. And now he has a whole Netflix series that you can go watch right now. So I'm proud of him for that. Uh, but, yeah, I'll, I'll be letting you guys know about more black products that you guys can buy yourself. Okay, like I said, I've done a showcase so, so far. If you look on this channel, there are several videos right now of people's other black products you can get. OK, because I want to promote them as much as I can, because that just not not just so they can make money, but just so people know that it's out there. Because we that's the thing is like we always act like we want these products and then we act like we don't know what's out there. But I've done the legwork for you. I always buy this stuff whenever I can get my hands on it. So I want to let you guys know what's out there that you can get from black artists out there. OK. So. And like I said, I, obviously, I want to keep creating that stuff because I want to be in, inspirational to not just grown black folks, but especially the black children. Because when they have that positive black image, uh, there's no limit to what they can do. OK. And, you know, to paraphrase uh, the late great old dirty bastard, Marvel and DC is good, but Chris Crazy House is for the children. OK, so that's I think my stuff, you know supersedes their stuff just for the fact that uh you know when i make my stuff is i love i'm not trying to poison their mind with a lot of garbage okay despite what people might think about my rhetoric i'm trying to actually build some positive and productive citizens in the black community okay i do more than your education system does okay <laughs> like uh like my man rizza said on that the wu-tang forever album you say you don't even need to go to summer school. Get the Wu-Tang double CD and you'll get all the education you need. I, I can say that, too, about Chris Crazy House products. Forget about summer school. Get Chris Crazy House comics 
and, and graphic novels and coloring books, and you'll get all the education you need. Subscribe to this, this YouTube channel. You'll get all the education you need, okay? So that, that's what I want to say to the folks out there, that I'm very serious about this. Like I was literally last night, I'm like exploding with different ideas of what I want to do in the near future. And I want to make sure I hunker down and get them all done. So uh, I appreciate you guys being here. I hope this live stream was a good help to you as far as like when you want to be a, a vendor at a comic book convention. And if you didn't watch this live, hopefully you guys watch the recording of this and you guys get some good info on how you can make money as a comic book vendor and at a comic book convention. Okay. I appreciate you all as always. And uh, next week, because I will be at OnyxCon, I'll be traveling on Friday. I'll be driving. So I won't be doing a live stream that Friday. So I might do one the Thursday before. So what day is that? So the 22nd, I might do a, a live stream sometime on the 22nd. I don't know what time yet. I'll let you guys know. So make sure you subscribe here and you'll know when I'll be doing the, the next live stream. Okay. So, but I won't do it, do it Friday. Now, but I'll do it the honest kind. I will take pictures. I'll take some video and I might post them here as well as uh, on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll be seeing, you know, constant, constant streams and constant artwork and pictures of fans and everything else at that convention. But make sure you stay tuned here. Because that will let you know everything that's going on with me at the time. Okay. So, guys, I appreciate you as, as always. Thank you for coming. Uh, my I let me let me just say this. There's not a lot of people watching me right now on this live stream, but guess what? The ones that stick with me now is the ones I remember in the future. Okay. That that you guys mean more to me than people who are going to jump on the bandwagon when this channel really kicks off, okay? <laughs> you guys mean more to me than that, so I'm always going to be loyal to you first than anybody else. You always get my first consideration because you were with me when no one else gave a damn. That's why I'm very loyal to people who are with me from the beginning. I'm um, just like that on my other channels as well. People who, who are always with me down from the, get, the giddy up, those are the people I appreciate the, the most, okay? Yeah, those are the ones that stick with you the best, okay? So uh, I appreciate you guys being here. And like I said, that uh, probably next month, the month of September, I'll be doing some free giveaways on this channel. So you want to stay tuned for that. And But you'll have to be a subscriber, and you'll have to you know actually leave comments on the, the videos, and I will let you know when those free giveaways are going to be going on and what I will be giving away. So I'll be giving away some of my products, but also some very popular products by other black artists. So you guys can get the leg up on them as well. So just to let you know, that'll be coming up in September. And just because September is my birthday month and I always feel very giving and appreciative that I'm here for another year. So I like giving away stuff around my birthday. So anyway, thanks guys for showing up. And I appreciate you. And I should have some new animation coming up tomorrow on this channel. So it'll be some more of my classic animation that I've done for Work for Hire. And it'll be on this channel tomorrow. So I appreciate you guys. And hopefully this was able to help you. And hopefully you make some money at the combo convention that you decide to go to. Anyway, Chris Crazy House signing out. Peace. <laughs>